Well, welcome. Um, great to be back at Oshkosh and with Redbird. Um, I was here last year, for my first time with Redbird Migration in, uh, where were we, in Lakeland. So, super fun. Um, what's fun about doing these events, and I'm sure a lot of you will agree, is you get to see a lot of the same faces over and over again and uh, begin to build relationships. And uh, that, is, that is what is super, super exciting about um, being in aviation and being a part with, being here with EAA, Redbird, um, my nephew friends are here, um, a lot of flight school friends are here, so just really great to see everybody um, and talk about Four Flight and some of the exciting things that we have um, going on. Um, my name is Ryan Bolander. Um, a lot of you I've met before. Um, I have a really, I have a really amazing job with Four Flight. Uh, my job is, was created just a year and a half ago, and my job is to connect with the flight training community, to learn about what schools are doing, uh, how they're training their students, learn about the industry, and also to take our amazing EFB Four Flight and use it and get it in the hands of schools and CFIs globally. Um, one thing that Four Flight is used for primarily, obviously, is flying, flying, um, in, you know, getting across the country, getting around a practice area. But what we've all found out is that Four Flight is an incredible, incredible training tool as well. So not only are we using it in the cockpit to keep our students in CFIs safe, but we're using it on the ground in the classroom. And so what I'm going to talk about today is primarily how you and your CFIs can really leverage the features in ForeFlight to make it a truly valuable training project. So, uh, a, little, a little bit more about me. Um, I've only been flying five years, uh, so this is truly a second career for me and a life training, a life changing career. Uh, many of you have been in aviation all of your lives. Um, I envy you for that, um, but I'm also just incredibly proud to enter this amazing. Um, group of aviators, um, even in, in midlife. Um, I did grow up with a passion for it. Um, my mom was a flight attendant for 30 years with CWA in the golden age of aviation. Uh, when I was a kid, she'd come home smelling like smoke. Um, <laughs> uh, and she'd bring me home the needless little airplanes and wings. And um, I was actually looking at the, uh, the EAA museum yesterday, and they had a pair of plastic TWA flight training wings in the cabinet and I said, I texted my mom quickly and I said, do we still have these? And she says, oh yeah, I've got several. So now I'm going to go home and get those out of the drawer somewhere and put them somewhere prominently uh, in my house. Um, I grew up watching the movie The Right Stuff, uh, which is, you know, about, about the history of aviation and the space race. So truly a passion and to, you know, I'm pitching myself every moment that I can be flying, I could be teaching, I could be in four flight, and so uh, it's truly an honor to be here doing this today with you guys. So um, I'm going to roll through this pretty quickly. Um, this is not going to teach you how to use four flight to dive in there and go through the features and the buttons, etc. Um, this is primarily just to give you ideas on what is available in four flight and how you can use it in a teaching capacity. Uh, we may have time for questions at the end. We'll see. Um, I'm going to get rolling quickly, so um, here we go. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit, a bit about what an electronic flight bag is. Um, we're also going to talk about, because this comes up all the time, especially um, as a need for flight schools to understand, is that is the legality of using an EFB. And, and um, the FAA is not entirely silent on this. There's an advisory circular 9178 that discusses about you know their, the, the FAA stance on electronic flight bags, and we'll talk about what's in there, and then, which is great for you to know, for your CFIs to know, etc. And then we're going to get into the interesting stuff, which is how to use more flight and a lot of the features we have in teaching a lot of aviation concepts to students. So, what is an electronic flight bag? Oh, uh, so we just had a discussion with about paper and how a lot of people still use paper, how, how we have sort of a, a lot of the aviators have used paper for their entire lives, have that connection that we need to have something to hold on to. Um, I was the same way, um, even five years ago, I did my entire private pilot with paper. I didn't use more flight until my instrument grade. 
And so I did the cross country flight planning. I did, I had massive amounts of charts that I was reviewing very, very quickly. Had a paper log book, uh, paper POH, everything, approach plates, paper everywhere, whole bookshelf full. Um, and that was what many of our training desks look like and what many of the training desks look like for your students. The neat thing about an EFP is you can get it all within the palm of your hand in an Apple phone. A lot of my stuff's in my phone or an iPad. Um, this is revolutionary to us um, as folks who have been in the aviation industry for a while. But as many of you know, our students are growing up with this as their reality now. Um, so this is so talking about an incredible efficiency and a new industry standard about how we manage paper and efficiency and the tool and the power of the tool we have available to us. So what is the purpose of an EFB? Um, an EFB really helps maximize situational awareness uh, and especially safety. Um, Bob was just telling me about how he was, I'm going to tell your story right now. No, I told you I was going to use it. I didn't know I was going to use it, to use it. Use it. And, and 10 minutes later. Uh, he, was, he was flying across uh, near the Gulf Coast and he was looking at our glide ring and the glide ring was just beyond the edge of land and he asked ATC to change his course so that his glide ring would be over land. So again, using foreflight for that as a way of enhancing his situational awareness about where his airplane could glide and then making a decision. So awesome story, I love that. Um, and it's also an EFB to help make flight planning and flying more efficient and even enjoyable. Um, when I started cross country flight planning, my CFI as he pulled out all of these, all of his paper charts and an ESP and, and a plotter, he said, "This is the day everybody quits." So because it's yeah, I see some people nodding, um, and that's because it, it is something where we, we get in aviation ideally um, with an idealism about flying and being in the sky makes you know we're spinning wheels and stuff. So. Um, that's a, it's, a, there's a, um, it's important to really understand those concepts, but this can be made training more enjoyable for a student to know that at least if they're learning on paper, they've got uh, a tool such as an EFB or ForeFlight to use. Okay, so the legality of using an EFB. Uh, this is, we're going to kind of get through this kind of quickly and just kind of hit on the main, uh, main concepts. Um, but so the, obviously the FAA has got a definition of an EFB, similar to what I said. Um, an electronic display system is intended primarily for cockpit or cabin use, so it's, it's expected to be on board with you. Um, it's going to have checklists, navigation charts, POHs, and also perform basic calculations. So um, performance out of fuel calculations, etc. So the, the FAA is a direct, directly in line with the use and how we've been using and developed for flight. Um, again, operators alone recognize the benefits of using portable electronic devices um, as opposed to big bags of manuals and paper um, to perform a variety of functions typically accomplished by paper references. So, you know, there is the explicit understanding that there is a movement between paper toward electronic. So just some things that the, the FAA lists in the advisory circular explicitly um, replace paper references traditionally carried in the cockpit, including the POH. My POH is in my iPad. Several POHs. Uh, minimum equipment lists, weight and balance calculations electronically, aeronautical charts, internal procedures. The FAA also recognizes that EFB can be used during all phases of flight in terms of paper reference material. Now, however, they do make some comments here that I think are incredibly important and that we completely <laughs> agree with the value. Um, the information has to be the functional equivalent of a paper reference material. So obviously, in floor flight, you're going to get the exact reproduction of a current FAA chart, whether it's a sectional or approach procedures, airport diagrams, um, and the information used for navigation is current, up-to-date, and valid. So that's something that you would expect as just as standards in aviation, but that's something that within ForeFlight we recognize to make sure that we're going to provide up-to-date charts in the, in the 
functional equivalent or the exact copy of what is provided by the FAA. So, the, the FAA also recognized uh, the PIC, and the PIC may decide to use an EFP uh, without operational approval as long as they follow the guidelines. The guidelines being functionally equivalent and up to date. Um, other key considerations, but not required. Um, you know, obviously there's some things that are not required that are a really, very really good idea, and I'll harp on this a couple times, is to have a backup, um, either paper or electronic. Uh, when I fly, I have two devices. I have a backup battery, and I have a paper chart. The paper chart is, you know, it's, it's there. You know, why not? You know, it, it's, it doesn't weigh anything, so why was it? Um, a portable EFP should not be dependent. This is straight from the advisory circular on the aircraft power source. This is their wording, except for a certified power source, like a cigar lighter. Um, that's verbiage from the advisory circular. Um, a portable EFB should not be connected or receive data from any aircraft systems. So again, we're looking at some avoiding, you know, to make sure there's duplication. <clears throat> The FAA also recognizes and we encourage the pilot to pay attention to the physical EFB and how you stow it for takeoff and landing and, and potential changes during flight. Um, I've had it, I've had it with my students where we are rotating and that EFB is on our lap and next thing you know, it's gonna, it, you know, gets in the way. Um, that's dangerous. So pay, pay attention to how it's stowed. Um, you know, dro dropping on the floor, things when they're dropping on the floor in the airplane tend to be gone for the duration of the flight. So again, pay careful attention on how you're doing that. Um, there's, there's great mounting out there um, for iPads, etc. to make sure that you've got clear vision of what you can see outside the aircraft while having access to the EFB. Um, make sure the display is readable, lighting is adequate, and that potential EFB failures are mitigated. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but one thing that we have the ability to do in for flight is to invert the colors. So at night, you're not looking at a bright white approach plate that's blinding. You can change and invert the colors. And that's important to make sure that you know, you're protecting your night vision when you're using your EFP. And train, and this is, this is huge, train on the operational use of the EFP under the conditions of flight in which it will be used. Um, a lot of schools, we have a discussion um, on when to introduce an EFB into flight training. You know, there's, there's, it's, you know, there's different perspectives on that. Uh, one thing that I encourage is to introduce it on day one because it's something that a student can then become used to throughout the course of their training. Um, we all know that a student uh, can get buried into an EFB very easily trying to find information, and that's a training issue. You know, are you able to use your EFB efficiently before you get in the air so you're not learning something um, when you're barreling toward an airport and trying to get directions from ATC? So train with it, use it, become comfortable with it, treat it like another system in the aircraft. There's your backup. Um, with the fourth flight subscription, if, you have, if you're an individual describer, you can log into fourth flight on three devices of an iPad, two iPads, and one iPhone, or a combination thereof. Okay, so there's, there's what the FAA has to say. I, I believe that's really positive in terms of, of recognizing the value of the EFB in the cockpit. So again, I touched on this a second ago, is when should a CFI introduce the EFB to a student? Um, I talked about how ForeFlight can provide a tremendous efficiency. Um, when you're taking all of those training, training materials, the cost of acquiring those, um, the PHAC is available within ForeFlight as, as a digital download from the FAA. It's updated, all the advisory circulars are there. It's incredibly efficient to provide ForeFlight and then combine your documents and the documents provided by the FAA. Um, it's also create enjoyable learning techniques. Um, there's so many things that ForeFlight's able to illustrate to make flight training more easier and efficient. We'll get into airspace, some other things in a second, cross-country flight planning, what it looks like. Um, another thing that ForeFlight does is it makes, it creates the safety and situational awareness. Um, if you're sending your student on a solo cross country, yes, it's, there's value in having them prepare their flight plan ahead of time in paper. There's value in, in briefing 
using sharks, but when you send them on their way, provide for flight to give them additional situational awareness, value, peace of mind. You know, it's just it's just in a very very valuable tool that could really help them if things get to be get to a challenge. Um, again, with young students, they come with their iPads. They know exactly what to use. Um, they can find their way an iPad very quickly. And I've seen students dive into four flight and explore and proceed their way through at, at rapid efficiency of their own, just because they're comfortable with using Apple devices. Um, and it, and it, it gives it, you know there's it gives them that that um, enjoyment of using something. And then of course the cost savings with purchasing updates. Um, I had chart upon chart upon chart, always always refreshing them for every single check ride and every single time a new version came out in four flight, it's just been automatic. So another thing that I encourage CFIs is when you're teaching four flight, uh, move from simple to complex. And for those of you that are CFIs yourself, that's right out of the fundamentals of instruction. And that is, you know, you start with, if you have a new student, um, you don't want to start on the right there with synthetic vision overlaid on a map layer. Um, start left with just the simple air, the airport information. You know, the weather, where's the meets are, where the things are going to need appropriate to the level of training. Um, you know, if you're moving to approach plates, um, that's something obviously for instrument, but there's no, but you know, you can always, I always tell CFIs to encourage their students to just stick within the guide rails of their training and not get to be too far out. Uh, it's, it's easy to get um, paralyzed by the amount of information that ForeFlight provides and um, train them to move at an appropriate pace. <laughs> so one thing that ForeFlight really does well is you're able to store training documents in the EFB. Um, most of you know that ForeFlight comes preloaded with, um, there's actually we have a folder there ourselves, there's a ForeFlight folder. Um, if you don't know how to do something, we have constantly updating that with our own information. Many people don't even know it's there. Um, but we also have the FAA and a wide variety of FAA material that we're constantly updating. Uh, we work very closely with them to make sure that um, we have materials directly there available for download. Um, so in terms of flight training, an, efficient, an incredible efficiency to have those directly available, included in for flight, uh, directly for the students. Other things that I do, and that many of my schools do, is we're uploading our POHs, uh, we're uploading our weight and balance sheets for each individual tail, so there's an efficiency if you have a school of going through and finding exactly the information you need right there in, in the EFB. Um, they'll need to download it while they're on Wi-Fi, um, if you update that document, they're going to get that update, and then they'll have it update constantly. And then when they're away from Wi-Fi in the cockpit, they're going to be able to access that um, that document quickly without delay. I do that when I'm flying. I'll have a maneuver guide, or I'll look at the standards and I'll forget something while my students are doing. Yeah, that's great. Um, another thing that enhances flight training is access to nationwide charts. Uh, when I was training in, I'm well, from Phoenix, Arizona. I, I trained out of a ACHD, I think I failed to mention that. In that Southwest area, there's a lot of schools there. Um, but that was that was my world of training. Uh, that's all the access I had was the Phoenix sectional. Um, and that, that's what I learned of. Well, when you have access to nationwide charts, you can, you can conduct scenario training. Um, you can look at different areas of the country. Um, there's a lot of interesting things happening in the Bay Area. Um, in Washington, D.C., in Florida, a lot of things that are unique to different areas where your students could potentially be flying someday <clears throat> that you can train on right within four flight by using the whole map at your disposal. Another thing that, that is great that students particularly are already used to is making notes and annotations directly in the EFB. So when you look at the the documents within ForeFlight become essentially a similar to a paper document where they're able to make notes. If there's an update of that document, that note, those notes will remain um, and really can help you as an instructor mark up and, and use it. Um, it's a great tool, something that is incredibly valuable for training. In some ways, if you get comfortable with using annotations, it's even better than you know your chicken scratchings that you, can, you can't erase necessarily very well. You can erase them here in ForeFlight. Airspace, um, those of you who already fly with ForeFlight know that we do a really good job of 
in multiple dimensions to Spine Airspace. Obviously top down, but we also have a profile view. Um, use that as a teaching, as a way, way to teach. Um, on the left there is our profile view um, that you're familiar with, showing a airspace flying across country. On the right is more of a terminal environment, and on the upright, the upper, you can see the flight going through a cross section of multiple airspaces. Um, that upside down wedding cake that we're so fondly talking about as CFIs. So, you know, incredible then to play that flight and for flight and watch the aircraft go to different airspace um, can really, really illustrate how your pilot needs to have that awareness that it's not just a 2D top down view, but brings the 3D um, dynamic of airspace that we're all used to, to for our students. We have a great feature that really helps teaching atmospheric circulation and temps and winds aloft. Um, a lot of you will know if I've ever discovered our map layers. Um, our maps are on that list on the left and on the right are all the different things you can layer on top. We have an amazing feature that we developed during COVID called winds and temps, which shows at, at various altitudes um, what winds and temperatures are doing and the circulation of air and air speeds. Um, you, when you when viewed in, in sum and total, you can really see the weather patterns of the United States in real time and, and around the world. Truthfully, really, really great visual for um, instructing this you know, weather weather patterns. So did you guys partner with Wendy? What's that? Did you guys partner with Wendy? I'm not sure. It's a website that looks pretty much identical to, to your new Wendy's house. Possibly. Yeah. I'm not sure. But um, no, but this is a feature that was that has been used and is, is you know a beautiful new feature within Four Flight for teaching. Very cool. So one thing that I want to impress upon too when you're when you're training your students and you're at CFIs is to pre-flight your EFB just like you would any other system. Um, we're really really good about taking out our 182, 172 pre-flight checklist. Going around looking at the pitot tube, checking the something the tanks, dipping the dipping the tanks, uh, checking the lights, all of the things the control surfaces. But so many times uh, we don't consider that our iPad and the data and the data therein needs to be pre-flighted as as um, rigorously as the rest of the aircraft. I'm guilty of this. Um, incidentally, in four flight, we also had our checklist staff have a EFB pre-flight checklist with some generic things that um, students and CFI should be incorporating. Uh, that's checking the software, making sure that you have the most up-to-date version of four flight downloaded. Uh, checking your battery. Um, mm. I've got a spare battery that was not charged before. Um, that's, it's, you know, again, something that if you're pre-flighting that, you're making sure that you're using the one that's been plugged into the wall and that it's fully charged. Uh, carry your spare. Uh, make sure you have the ability to charge in air if you need to. Uh, make sure that you have the current downloaded, um, or this is part of the pack feature where you pick your route and you pack ahead of time. That's going to ensure that four flights going to bring all the current weather, current notams, everything in. Um, that's part of the pre flight that you should be doing. Um, making sure that your additional hardware, whether it's a Century or an ADSB device, all of those will require additional checks. Um, you know, I've been excited bringing plug in my new Century Plus to my cockpit, and then suddenly I realized I didn't charge it. So um, these are important things to do um, if you're going to be relying on your EFB to pre-flight it. Obviously, you want to train on what an EFB system failure would be. Uh, we're very fond of CFIs to so reaching over and pulling the throttle and simulating an emergency engine failure. You know, but what happens when your student is buried in four flight and you know in the in the summer months of Arizona, you leave your four flight, your iPad on the dashboard, and it, it is out like that, and you're done. That's it, it's off. Um, it doesn't matter if it's charged, your battery, etc. Uh, train your students. If they're really becoming too comfortable in using and relying on four flight exclusively or any other EFB exclusively, train with removing it. Um, a lot of DPEs are now doing that as well. Uh, we're seeing more DPEs accept floor flight as a as showing up at, to a check ride and having a flight plan prepared electronically. But the, the DPEs are also very 
appropriately testing the, the failures of an EFP as well. And you should and schools need to be training on that. Rounds with students, um, something with, that ForeFlight can really shine with is the ability to put a route into ForeFlight. You can see it directly on a map. Um, waypoints, you can drag and move it. It's really easy to make adjustments as opposed to a paper chart. Um, but even more wonderfully, you get a cross section. So backing up at this slide, this slide with, uh, at first glance looks like it could be a pretty appropriate route. Um, but if you are looking at it more closely, you can see that one of the waypoints goes very, very close to that mountaintop. Uh, stuff that you can use to just as part of your briefing to make sure that your students are preparing a safe flight plan or that they recognize uh, where they're going and, um, and the important considerations of terrain. Also with flight plans, again, you can even plan longer trips. Um, Cross-country is very great. Uh, one thing that we have is the ability to look at flights in 3D mode. Uh, cloud is going to make this even better. Um, but we have uh, ways of looking at our routes and looking at our flights in 3D. Um, what an amazing tool to be able to fly a flight with a student ahead of time, um, where you can go over terrain, you can look at uh, various geographical features on the ground, uh, that you're really able to look at uh, terrain in 3D views. Um, it can have safety, learning. It's an incredible way to train in a classroom with an iPad. Another, uh, similarly, we have an amazing feature called 3D Airport. Uh, this is a, a truly astounding feature where um, you can select any airport, there's a 3D button, and you'll get a three-dimensional view with terrain of the airport environment. You can zoom in, you can zoom out. Uh, there's a night mode. Now, whenever I'm sending one of my students on their solo cross country or to an airport, they're not familiar. Uh, we're going to sit down with this. And we're going to spin the map. We're going to look at approaches from different directions. Um, I'm going to make sure they're oriented with um, the mountains where they are, where the power plant on the ground might be, um, with the runway directions. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult for a student to conceptualize the angle of the runway compared to your approach. It's tough for me. Um, so being able to understand and look at your approach at airport, zoom in, zoom out, um, can give you a tremendous amount of, of pre-briefing situational awareness. One thing that we can do, we talked about being able to annotate documents earlier. Uh, we also have the ability to annotate our maps as well. Uh, one thing I'll do is when I'm, I'm doing a flight plan with my students is I'll make a little note on their um, agents. This is when you cross this line, this is when you, when you should call. Um, it can be a reminder, it can be a training note, it can be a, a note to you to switch the tanks. Um, feel free to annotate your maps. Um, I, you know, usually I write the information for ATIS on the map as well and the runways in use. Um, again, a tremendous tool for training but also for your, stu your students in flying. Um, also, for a lot of schools that have pilot uh, programs, professional pilot programs where they're looking to take a student from zero time all the way to the airlines, are recognizing the value of training on electronic checklists. Uh, many commercial operators, business aviation, are using electronic checklists in the cockpit, um, and it's important, that it's important to begin to train students to use electronic checklists on their iPad as opposed to the laminated ones that are in the cockpit. Um, we have a whole range of checklists that are already included um, based on POHs. You can go into four flight, you can pick the make and model of your aircraft. If you need a checklist for a Cessna 172 light model, we've got it. You can import it. Um, it's, it's built directly from the POH. And then more importantly, you can even update that and customize that checklist um, to, scoop, to suit your school's um, operating policies, your, your procedures, or if there's anything else you just need your students to do when they're flying, um, you, can do those, you can make those updates with four flight. We do on time. Straight on, we're good, okay. All right, we're just about to yeah, wrap it up. A couple other things you can do is in four flight, and this is hugely valuable to schools, you can create um, training area, you can, you can create um, training overlays of your training areas in four flight. Uh, some of you might rec recognize here from my neck of the woods on the left, that's the Southwest practice area. Um, that is a map overlay of all, ex all commonly 
agreed upon visual reporting points for all the flight schools in the area. So all the flight schools generally have that map on the left, and they're using those waypoints as a floor flight overlay. On the right, that is a train, the training areas we built for one of our biggest customers, University of North Dakota. Again, that allows, gives it more situational awareness on what they can do. Um, there's a little bit more rigor in terms of designing map layers, but usually at flight schools, you'll have someone on your staff that can do this and will we'll work with you. And we have a lot of guidance on how to create map layers to, to suit the information you'd like to have on top of the BFR section. Um, you can teach holds and traffic patterns electronically in ForeFlight. Um, you know, we have, a, we have a, a feature where you can drop in the information on a hold and it's going to draw that hold directly. Um, that saves the hassle of your poor CF double eyes sort of trying to draw holes on the map and we're not even they're quite sure how it goes. Um, but in Fourth Flight, you can, you, can, you can put it in and it's going to drop it there and you can rest assured. You can also do that in flight if you're given a hold from ATC and you're going you're to get it accurate. Um, a great, great training tool. Um, you can also add traffic patterns within Fourth Flight. There's your 45 degree entry to the downwind on the right. There's your teardrop, your left hand teardrop to right traffic on the right. Left and right, sorry. Um, again, visually teachable and displayable in four flight. Um, you can debrief using your EFB. Um, I imagine that this is going to get more and more enhanced over the next several months as we more firmly integrate with Cloud Ahoy and what they're uh, bringing to us. Um, but this is our track log. Obviously, we need you and your CFIs are using our track log already. Um, I'm sure this is only going to get better and better with our new acquisition of Cloud Ahoy. Um, but you can see so much data, so much useful in teaching in terms of airspeed, altitude. Obviously, there's a lot of touch and goes there in the middle. A great way to really understand um, how a flight went and debriefing it. Um, we also have instructor tools within ForeFlight, um, the ability to do endorsements. You can let you, your CFIs, can, if, you have, if, your, if your school is using ForeFlight, your CFIs can electronically sign off on, um, on flights. And they, can, they can beam those electronically. Those all become part of the training record that's, that's acceptable by the FAA. Um, endorsements, all the endorsements are in ForeFlight, taken right from the, the advisory circular such that when you're endorsing your student for solo or for the practical tests, those endorsement records can be transferred directly in. Uh, the verbiage is there and they can be modified as necessary if you need to put in the airport where your student is able to solo. Logbook reports as opposed to a paper logbook which are stuck with the columns that are there. In ForeFlight, you can create those additional columns that you need to track your time, to add things up. Um, really quick note on electronic logbooks, start your students on day one because we all know, or most of us know, it's very difficult to go back and create an electronic logbook once you have created several flights in a paper logbook. Um, there's ways to do it. Um, there's, there's, there's shortcuts to getting an electronic record made if you have a, a many, many hours of flights. Um, but I highly, highly, highly encourage you in your schools to have an electronic logbook started on day one for your students. So one thing I also want to mention before I wrap it up is uh, part of my job at ForeFlight is to really help schools and universities to become standardized with ForeFlight. Um, right now there's a lot of schools that are using paper charts, there's schools that are using other products out there, other EFBs um, that may or may not have the functionality of ForeFlight. Um, there's so much that we can do additionally when a school groups together ForeFlight accounts. Um, one of them is if a school is purchasing four flight licenses in bulk, you can then assign, you have control over those licenses and you can assign those out to students such that everybody or your instructors or subgroup all are using four flight um, the lic uh, uh, licenses that are owned by the school. Those licenses are definitely discounted. Um, one thing you can do when those licenses are all connected, you can get your organization documents and you can push those out through a Dropbox account for cloud storage so that all of your flight school documents can appear within ForeFlight when that license is assigned. Um, you can also take all of your aircraft profiles 
um, that you can create as organization aircraft and then push those out by tail number so when your students are flight planning, they can find those specific, your organization's aircraft in there and use them. And then you're comfortable that those aircraft profiles were created uh, accurately and adjusted and updated by you at the school as necessary. So the ability to purchase four flight licenses in bulk and assign them, you're getting your students their aircraft profiles and their documents and jet charts as well if you choose to add those um, at a less expensive rate than what they can purchase for flight themselves. So that's interesting to you, definitely talk to me. Um, we have many, many, many flight schools that are um, standardized with four flight devices that the school has purchased. So um, how can we help? A lot of ways to get in touch with us. Um, if you have a technical question, we have a great college support team at team at fourflight.com. Um, this is, you know, if you're having a glitch or an issue, reach out to those folks. They're pilots, they're passionate. Um, we're, we have a great, great support group of, of, of pilots who are ready to assist with technical issues. Um, if you're a flight school and you're interested in, in talking to me or getting more information about ways that we can help your school standardize with four flight, uh, sales at fourflight.com is, is a great place to start, but I'd also encourage you to introduce yourself and grab my card on the way out. Um, so in some, and then we also, I encourage you, we've um, recently built out the education page at Four Flight with a lot of the things that you've, um, that we talked about today on just ways of using the EFP. So um, in closing, I want to really thank you. Uh, when I talk to flight schools, one of the first things I usually find out is that students are already using Four Flight and your CFIs are using it already. So um, we're proud about that. I'm a, I'm a loyal user myself. So um, really appreciate you guys um, supporting Four Flight for the years. And um, very, very good luck to your schools and all of your careers. So thanks for coming. It was good.